Roger, there's way, 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 way too much happening um, in our world, uh, in the NBA. Way too much, even since the last time you and I spoke. The Knicks and Timberwolves made a blockbuster trade involving Carl Anthony Towns. Derek Rose retired. Everybody, uh, every team has now held media days and every training camp is now open. And amid all of the festivities yesterday with the season coming back, uh, we got the sad news that uh, Dikembe Mutombo, your former teammate in Philadelphia, had died of brain cancer, just 58 years old. Um, really, really sad news on an otherwise, uh, you know, media day is a festive day for this league. And so that was a very sobering uh, bit of news to drop right in the midst of it all. Raja, I mentioned it, you know, Dikembe Mutombo, Hall of Famer, 18 seasons, six teams. Quick rundown of, of some of the highlights here. Retired with the second most blocked shots in NBA history, behind only Akeem Olajuwon, three-time blocked shots champ. Um, In 95-96, he averaged four and a half blocks. That was the sixth highest in history. And all of these seasons that were higher than his came before then. No one has gotten anywhere near that mark, four and a half blocks per game average, uh, since Dikembe in 95-96. Four-time Defensive Player of the Year, eight-time All-Star, six-time All-Defensive, three-time All-NBA, also... I say this with pride uh, is in my role as president of the Pro Basketball Writers Association. He's the only two-time winner of the PBWA's uh, J. Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award, which is appropriate given that Dikembe was known as much for being a, a humanitarian as for being a great basketball player. Um, for more reading on all of that, I, I highly recommend my, my friend Harvey Ariton's obituary in the New York Times and our friend Mark Spears's feature on Anscape about Dikembe. Uh, by the way, really smart dude as well. <laughs> he was pre-med at Georgetown before going all in to, to, to become a basketball player. Double major in linguistics and diplomacy. He spoke five African languages in addition to English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. Um, just an incredible human being. I only had a handful of interactions with him over the years, Rod, so I didn't really get to know him as well as you did during your year and a half with Dikembe in Philly. What was he like as a teammate, as a locker room guy, as a leader, and, and obviously a really important presence on a team <clears throat> that was built around Iverson as the offensive engine, but Dikembe's there as the backbone of the defense and obviously the most decorated player, I think, uh, at the moment that he arrived, they were the most most accomplished, I should say, at the moment that he that he arrived. Yeah, um, terrible, terribly sad news yesterday. And I think you hit a couple you hit a couple things that I I would say just off the bat. Um, our first thoughts when when Dikembe comes up, um, the word human being, like what when when I was having interactions with people like his former bodyguard Tim Pellerin, who spent a lot of time with with Dikembe and I got to know when he was with the when I was with the Sixers like when I was reaching out to people yesterday and they were reaching out to me the I just kept saying human being like he was just an amazing human being right like and while like obviously we're all human beings like I wouldn't use that phrase about a ton of people um he was just a good person a good dude um and humanitarian is the other one that leaps out at me just you know he was always I mean, always trying to figure out what he could do to give back, um, especially, you know, to, to, to his homeland, um, to the point where I remember at the end of seasons, you know, we'd have our lockers and you're at, you're at your exit meetings and everyone's kind of clearing out and, you know, you put all your stuff in the two, three big black garbage bags and you load it into your car do, or tell the equipment guy to, to get rid of it. If you don't want, you know, as you get older, you get rid of it. When you're younger, you're taking it all home to like give away to friends or whatever. And, and Dikembe would, would be, you know, and I don't know what year this was in the league for him, but personally, this wasn't like a staff of people that he had to do this. He would be walking around the locker room, you know, asking you if, you know, the, you wouldn't mind donating that gear um, and throwing it in those bins over there because he was going to be packaging that up and sending it home um, for young aspiring basketball players in Africa so that they could have short shirts, shoes, and what have you. And so that was just all, that was an all the time thing with Dikembe. Um, you know, so those are the, those are the two things. Howard, like as a teammate, um, like I was blessed. I got to know Dikembe uh, when I tried out for Atlanta and I was with them for roughly two months, uh, my first year out of school. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I was young, just trying to make a team, trying to figure out my way around a pro training camp, um, trying to figure out how I should act in, in a locker room or, or in a, uh, in a weight room. And, you know, Dikembe, the first time I ever met Dikembe was at Life College in a, in a weight room. And I was in there lifting weights. He would not have known who I was because those guys are on vacation when a young guy like me comes in to start working out. But he was the nicest guy in the world. Like, just, just spent the whole day talking to me, getting me up to speed on on what was going to take place and and how we were going to do things and what training camp was going to look like, how Lenny Wilkins, you know, expected his 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 guards to play. Just, I mean, you don't have to do that for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to make the team. Right. And you know, that was him. And so when I got a chance to play with him in Philly, um, he was the perfect anchor for the team that was built around Allen Iverson. Right. And just what the, the, the mistakes that he was able to erase around the rim and the freedom that it gave, you know, Allen and some of our other defenders to go out there and gamble and take risk and pressure because you knew he had, you knew you had Deke behind you was incredible, but, but, that's not that like that's not what he was like that was great but that's not who he was the guy he was was the one that used to take me out to dinner and take uh you know Alvin Jones and myself and Damone Brown when we'd be in Atlanta and we had no effing idea what we were supposed to be doing or where we should be eating and we're probably going to go get a slice of pizza or something he'd take us out to like an amazing meal somewhere and sit us down and talk to us about hey man you guys got to tighten up and here's how we need you to dress and he was the guy who would bring Alvin Jones like unsolicited, like four suits on a road trip and just drop them off because Alvin was his rook. And it's, it's more than just teaching you how to block a shot or how to set a good screen and roll. Like these are life lessons. You're trying to, you're trying to in your own way, help raise a young man who aspires to have a career like you had. And I think he was just a great champion of that, man. Like he was just a, a great dude to be around, um, bring you into the fold, treat you like you were part of his, you know, family or extended family in a way that just made you feel comfortable and welcome. So, you know, I didn't get to spend a, uh, as much time with Deke as other people, um, you know, but but it, it was tragic to hear that news yesterday. And he was just an, an amazing person. But now don't get this twisted. And I don't mean to just ramble. Um, he was also the dude that like I, I told you how he, he was great with me in, in Atlanta and he was great with me in Philly. But we're at St. Joe's College, like having a practice because PCOM, where we used to practice in Philly, was was something was being held. So we're over at St. Joe's and Dikembe got a rebound and I was fucking around like on his rebound, trying to like smack at the ball and get a quick one. And he shot me a quick bow and gave me seven stitches across <laughs> my eye, eyelids. But like not mm. and not like talking shit and being rude yeah. about it. But he looked at me like, yo, you know better than that. And at that time, I was like. I fucked up. I do know better than that. Like, so, you know, just he wore all of those hats and had a great balance about uh, being a tough big when you had to be tough and big in this league, but also having a soft, a soft heart and compassionate and caring and, 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 and just an awesome human being too. I love that he can bow you in the eye and you could be like, Oh my bad. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know what? It's what Howard. And if you know me, right? Like, you know, I mean, anyone who's ever seen me get bowed or something like that, my reaction usually is not to to understand why I was bowed. Um, maybe in retrospect at times I could do that. But in the immediate, we locked eyes. And he looked at me like, bro, you know you're not supposed to be in here reaching at this ball. And I said, I don't know. I don't think I nodded, but I was like, in my head, I nodded. Like, yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, there was, there was, there, you were not exactly going to try to uh, go, uh, Toe to toe, or I guess uh, elbow to forehead with uh, to get me no, on top. No, no, it's not going to work out well for me. <laughs> what was the dynamic like with him and Iverson? Because like Dikembe's a veteran at that point, and he's he's you know he's already like you know I think all I think three he'd had three of his four Defensive Player of the Year awards by then. Um, he's he's a, accomplished. He's you know he's an elder statesman already of sorts, or at least mid career statesman. Um, and Iverson, you know, is still trying to break through. And obviously, you know, like uh, Iverson, uh, incredibly talented Hall of Famer himself, but certainly a, a bit of a, uh, you know, impulsive offensive player and somebody you, you kind of got to get acclimated to and still had lessons to learn. And he and Larry Brown clashed plenty. I'm sure that Dikembe was a pretty powerful voice in that locker room. Any any recollection of whether Dikembe was, you know, or how he tried to help bring Iverson along? Um. 
I don't, Howard. Like, I don't, I don't know that I was privy to, you know, if, if Dikembe was, was, you know, again, I think this speaks to like leadership style and who you are as a person. Like Dikembe wasn't really blasting anyone or having those type of conversations for public consumption. Like, and I'm sure he did because Dikembe was one of those guys, first of all, just like a booming deep, like voice. Right. So like when he spoke, you know, the, 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 you, you kind of tuned in, not just because of the, like the sound of it, but like you knew something was up. Um, but I, 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 so I can't really speak to any specific interaction with them in regards to that. But Dikembe was a steady, a, a steady force. Like, you know, I, I say this affectionately, like Alan was more erratic, like Chuck was more erratic. And I, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but like it, it was the style he played, right? Like it was, it was flashy. It was, it was, uh, after you, like we could go through strings of like misses and then reel off like 35 in a row. Like it was, it, you know, it was up and down all over the place, chaotic. And Dikembe was just solid, like a solid dude in practice every day there, knowing what you're going to get out of it. Um, a solid dude on the bus and on the plane there, same spot, dressed to the nines, knowing what you're going to get out of that solid, you know, just solid across the board. So as much as I could tell you, I don't, know about any specific conversation i think you know having that presence in a locker room with an Allen iverson just the presence alone um again i use the word anchoring like yeah that's an anchor of your locker room right like people know like he used to sit next to me like my favorite thing was like d tell me your name again and he would he would go the full, name. Did the full name that was like my favorite like <laughs> <laughs> It was my, and so I called him Jean Jacques. Like that was, that was my thing for the rest of my career. Like when I saw him, like I used to call him Jean Jacques. Like that was, that was like the favorite, my favorite part of his name. But like, um, just a steady dude, man, a great pro. Um, obviously an incredible player, man. He got defensive player of the year that year. Um, I've never felt as bad for a player. Like I think they changed the rule. Like what they let Shaq do, and Shaq's my guy too. What they let him do in those finals by way of like just trying to like put an elbow through Dikembe's throat every time he got the ball. Like, yeah. do you remember that? Like that was crazy. Yeah, because you were allowed to like space to, I think, pivot with the ball or whatever. And you're, you're, I don't, I, I think like the elbows, you could have them up if it was like, again, natural basketball motion type stuff. I don't think they were using that language yet back then. But yeah, right. you're right. And in the middle of those finals, there was this. I, I have a friend who does a, a, a much better Dikembe than I do. I, that getting that low and that 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 grum, yeah. uh, uh, that growl. <laughs> yeah. But there was a quote. I believe it was something to the effect of like about defending Shaq, just him saying like, "He's a monster." <laughs> it's just, <laughs> which is just awesome and true. And like, man, I Dikembe, one of the great all time defensive players. And there's nothing he can do with Shaq. There's nothing anybody could do with Shaq back then. Like it just the the pure power there. But um. Watching Dikembe and good humoredly, right? Like with us anyway, I'm sure not so much in your film sessions or, or anywhere else, but like having to talk about the challenge of dealing with Shaq and all that Shaq could do. And yes, some of what Jack, Shaq could also get away with. Yeah. And he, and, and the thing was, he never, um, I mean, like, I don't, I don't remember the quote, but like in our locker room, you know, that you never got the feeling that Deke wasn't up for that challenge. It was just, you know, we all could see what was happening. Dikembe stood in there and literally put his face on the line over and over and over again in that series to 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 battle that. Like, and that, that's just who he was, man. Dikembe was a, yeah. a a warrior. Like those are some of the biggest, hardest elbows. You know, like like just a huge people see him and they think he's really like obviously he's skinny, like because you know, but like not small. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a huge person. And, and, uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I, you saw him in the paint. If you played against him personally, like the a level of the, the level of player I was, it was not even worth like, what do we, I'm not going in there. Yeah. For people who weren't, by the way, savvy to the reference about Dikembe's name. If you look him up on basketball reference, you'll see his first, his full name, which is Dikembe Mutombo, and then uh, a couple names that I'm not going to try to to pronounce, um, and eventually ends with Jean Jacques uh, Wamutombo, and so that's, there's the Jean Jacques reference that um, Raja was making. But there's a lot of names in between there. Yeah. Um, my favorite, and a lot of my favorite things. My favorite thing, Howard. Like, like I real talk. It was just 
maybe it, and it spoke to like your like his ability and just his his overall intellect and 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 worldliness that he spoke all those languages. So I enjoyed hearing it roll off of his tongue. Like it was a yeah. really cool experience. Yeah. Um I think of Matumbo and like my earliest memories before I was ever covering the NBA. Like I was just a sports fan in the mid 90s watching NBA playoffs like anybody else when the Nuggets as an eighth seed became the first ever eighth seed to upset a one in what was then a best of five series. They win it in five against uh, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp's Seattle Supersonics. And everyone has seen that highlight, right? Game ends and and Dikembe falls to the floor with the ball in his hands, all that, just the joy on his face. And then he rolls over and it's like, I get a little bit of joy, a little bit of tears, whatever, like just this amazing emotional moment. And, you know, like, superstars in this league or stars in this league, players in this league express their passion for the game in different ways. We talk about joy a lot these days when we talk about Steph Curry and the Warriors. Everybody kind of channels their passion for the game differently. But Dikembe, in addition to being like the mischievous finger wag, which like, look, it was a Mm -hmm. taunt. And back then, David Stern hated it because back then there were more fights and he didn't like anything that was a taunt and that might set guys off or feel like they were being humiliated and shown up. And now that's going to lead to other extracurricular activities, but it was fun. It was great. Yeah. And eventually they, the, the compromise was Dikembe would do the finger wag to the crowd <laughs> instead of at the player that he just swatted. He would do um, it in practice. Yeah. Yeah. He'd do it in practice sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure you got a few of those in addition to the elbow to the eye. Yeah. Um, but I loved that. Like who? Like every fan, you didn't have to be a Dikembe fan or a Nuggets fan or a Hawks fan or whoever, wherever he was playing to love that. It was awesome. It was fun. Uh, he brought fun to the game. He brought joy to the game. I think about that. I think about uh, yeah that moment um, laying on the court in his Nuggets jersey with that that big upset. And it's funny because that was a first round series, a best of five first round series. They lose in the second round, and so like ultimately, the moment kind of doesn't mean as much competitively, right? It. The Nuggets didn't go on to win the championship. It was a first round series, but it meant so much. And the emotional potency of that image uh, just has stuck with me for, you know, however long it's been. I don't want to count the years. Um, so it's just it's, it's just awesome. I, he was he was just a really fun figure in the NBA. Yeah, man. Like he he was, man. Like just I mean, you know, I got a lot of memories now that I, you know, I didn't really digest them yesterday, but just being in in limos like you know you come down and it's time to you know somebody's got something to bet this spot and we're gonna go out for a while and just being in the, the limo with him are really funny dude like um you know obviously you know there's a there's a little bit of a language thing there even though he was fluent as hell but like it rolled off his tongue a little different but like his his intonation and inflection and like just hilarious and uh i was a georgetown fan growing up so you know, I loved anything that had to do with John Thompson and the Hoyas. And I mean, imagine that kid on your like one of your first weight room visits with the Hawks and and Dikembe Mutombo starts chatting you up. You know what I mean? Like I just I was really fortunate and blessed and was living a dream. You know, it was a lot of players I could say that about, but Dikembe was certainly one of them, man. Being able to be in his little orbit and and you know, like for a kid like me thinking that like at 35 years old, I could be walking around and run into Dikembe Mutombo and he'd give me a hug and we'd shoot, shoot the shit for a few minutes. Like I would, I could have never imagined that. Like just a, a really good dude, man. Super blessed. And I was so sorry to hear for, for, for so many reasons, you know, the news yesterday. Yeah. C- condolences to everybody in the NBA community uh, who knew him and loved him. Um, huge, huge loss for, for the league, for the world. Um, and just gone way too soon. 